I want to start out by saying that the person who should have given this talk is my student, Ji Fang Kong. Uh, but unfortunately, he has broken his leg and cannot walk for three months. So, um, yeah. Uh, so he is the one who should have been here, not me. But anyway. Um, okay. So, uh, as we all know, that deep generative models have been highly successful, right? Like, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, very much uh, with, uh, with these new diffusion models, they're very much in the public imagination. They have done very well. They generate high quality samples. But the thing is that in some cases, they also may generate undesirable samples, right? And these are, you know, just maybe some concrete examples of samples that don't look so good. But then there are, you know, many other examples, right? Right? So things like, you know, let's just say graphic uh, images, right? So that, you know, you can get them to generate images like that. Uh, and uh, not just for vision models, for language models, you know, I mean, the fact that they generate offensive text has been a problem, which has been observed by many people. Um, then, you know, yeah, then images are violent or graphic images from multimodal models. So these kinds of things are, uh, you know, over there. And uh, kind of a big problem that I think a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people who generate these, uh, you know, who train these big generative models are grappling with is how can we redact these undesirable inputs, right? So, you know, how can you prevent your generative model from outputting racist text? How can you prevent your generative model from outputting, you know, various kinds of undesirable samples? And, you know, we don't pretend to solve this problem because it is a really hard problem. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have seen, there's been recently a lot of press about how chat GPT, it gives you an answer, but the answer may not be true. So, you know, how do you solve that? I mean, you know, I, I really don't know. But we are starting to attack the problem, right? So this is what this paper is about. What we are starting to do is we are starting to formalize this problem. Uh, in this case, we are doing it in the context of generative adversarial networks. So we are starting to formalize the problem. And then we are starting to, you know, study its properties and we are starting to attack the problem. And this is what this paper is about. Okay. So uh, what are generative adversarial networks? Uh, you know, these are, uh, you know, a kind of generative models, um, uh, which are, let's just say, manageable with uh, academic computational resources, uh, which is kind of why we chose it. So, uh, so these are, uh, you know, these generative adversarial networks. And, you know, the idea is that here, what you are doing is you are learning a generative model, uh, you know, uh, as a game between a generator and a discriminator, right? So there is a generator which will, uh, you know, generate some, let's just say, some images. There is a discriminator which will take the real data and try to tell the real versus generated data part. And then, uh, you know, if it succeeds, then it gives some, you get some signal back, your generative model gets some signal back and it tries to correct things so that the discriminator fails, right? So this game goes on for a long time and at the end of it, you have a really good generator, right? So this is kind of the idea of how we train GANs. And, uh, you know, uh, to to give you a little bit more to to formalize this a little bit more this is essentially kind of the objective that you get you find a generator g that optimizes the following objective function uh, this is the minimum over G, maximum over D. D is your discriminator. And here, you know, D of X is a score. So this is not a zero one discriminator. It's more like a score about, you know, how likely it is to be, uh, uh, you know, so D of X, think about it as probability that this is a real sample, right? And then, you know, you are trying to classify kind of the real, you know, you're trying to drive up the, uh, the real sample. You're trying to classify the real samples as real. So you're trying to drive up the score of the real samples and you're trying to drive down the scores of the fake samples and you know this is what your discriminator is trying to do and your generator is trying to thwart you right so this is kind of this objective which will uh you know come back to in a little bit okay Okay, so our problem is as follows. So we have these uh, generative adversarial networks and our goal is how do we redact undesirable inputs from these kinds of, uh, from these kinds of generative models, okay? So, uh, you know, so what is a, uh, so what are some plausible solutions over here? One possible solution is to retrain from scratch. So you redesign your, you know, you find your generative adversarial network, which is giving you some undesirable stuff. You redesign your pipeline, you do some data cleaning, augmentation, you know, maybe change the architecture, loss function, whatever, and then you retrain the whole thing. But this can be expensive and slow, right? Because, you know, you're redesigning the entire thing and it's not really guaranteed that at the end of it, you would get the desired result. It's expensive and slow and you may have to do it multiple times. So that's uh, kind of a disadvantage. 
Okay. The other solution is post hoc filtering. And here what you are doing is, you know, you have your generative adversarial network. And then at the end of it, you tag along a filter, right? So if it's outputting, uh, uh, let's just say racist text, you, can, you may have a filter which says, okay, is this text racist or not? If it is, then don't let it through, right? So you can have a filter. This may have various issues. So for example, if you are giving away your model to a third party, you have no guarantee that the third party will use the filter, right? They may not use your filter. They may decide to do something else. Um, it's also, you know, you may need multiple filters, uh, which may be expensive. You also, you know, lose a certain amount of flexibility. If you are learning things continuously, then you have to, you know, uh, also keep adapting your filter and, you know, things may go out of hand quite soon. Okay. Uh, a third plausible solution is machine unlearning, which uh, the previous, uh, my previous speaker has kindly talked about, so I don't need to uh, reintroduce you. But, uh, but it turns out that this is also, uh, this is, uh, this is basically a fundamentally different task. And we'll, we'll come back to this after we formalize data redaction. And you'll see that this is actually a fundamentally uh, a different task in the sense that, uh, you know, here we are hoping to do something quite different. Okay, and the solution that we are going to propose is uh, post hoc redaction. Uh, here, the idea is that we have a pre-trained model, right? Uh, you know, there's been a GAN, which has been trained on a bunch of data points. Uh, and then what we will do is we will post-edit it. So we won't do the retraining from scratch. Maybe we will make a few passes over the training data, but it wouldn't be as much as retraining everything from scratch, right? So this is faster than retraining from scratch. And the uh, the idea is that, you know, the advantage is, is that this is obviously efficient and more effective and hopefully more controllable. So, uh, so that's what we are going to do. Okay, so uh, how do we do this? So let's start out with uh, defining a formal framework, right? So what is our formal framework? Remember our data distribution was P-data, the redaction set was omega. Data redaction is essentially the task of learning the data distribution conditioned on, uh, you know, everything minus omega, right? So we are just hoping not to learn omega. So if you look at this picture, for example, maybe this Gaussian was your P data and maybe your redaction set are these orange uh, parts, right? The tails. Then what you want to do is you just want to learn the thing in the middle, right? You don't want to learn omega, right? There's nothing in omega, right? So this is our formalization, okay? And uh, how does this differ from unlearning? So to understand this, let's expand upon the example we just looked at, right? So if you did standard learning, and here what you are looking at is your data distribution was a Gaussian, and your Xs are the data points, right? If you did standard learning, what you would end up with is a Gaussian. If you did data redaction, what this would give you is, you know, the middle would look like a Gaussian, the end, the tails would be completely missing, right? This is your data redaction solution, the ideal data redaction solution, if you could do it, okay? And in unlearning, what you could do is you could also think of a corresponding unlearning problem where what you are doing is you have your data samples and let's say you are deleting the data from the tails and then you're still doing some learning, right? You're still learning the, the model. Uh, if you did unlearning on this, then the solution that you would get is a Gaussian with lower variance, right? Because you're still fitting the same model. It's just that you have a slightly different training data. Whereas in redaction, what you are looking to do is something very different. You are fitting a different model where there, there are like literally holes at the tails, right? And so that is how redaction is different from unlearning. So it's not exactly the same problem, okay? Okay. So now how do we do the data redaction? Well, it turns out in this case, the problem comes down to how do you describe the redaction set, okay? And uh, we talk in our paper, we talk about three plausible ways of describing it. So obviously the simplest way is data-based where you, know, you have your training data, parts of your redaction set are you know, parts of the training data, right? Maybe you know, let's say images of zero or something, right? So that's your redaction set that is data-based, okay? But it turns out there are more complicated things that you could do, right? So for example, you could even do uh, describe it in a validity-based uh, manner, right? Where you have, let's say, a binary classifier, uh, or uh, which will give you, is this point valid or not? So it will give you a zero, one answer. And, you know, if it is your redaction set is where it's not valid, right? An example of this would be maybe you have, uh, uh, you know, some boundary artifacts, which happens actually quite a lot in GANs, and you have a classifier which tells you that this image has a boundary artifact, so this is not valid. 
And there are no such images like that in your training set, uh, training data set, but your generative model will generate them and you can, uh, you know, you can redact those using this kind of redaction based classification. Okay, and uh, you know, kind of building on this motif, you can also talk about classifier based. So the difference between validity based and classifier based is that for validity based, you get a zero one answer for classifier based, you get a continuous score. So you get a little bit more signal which can help you. Okay, so this, uh, that's kind of the difference in these cases. Okay. Okay, so how do you do this? Let me start with database, which is kind of the simplest thing. Uh, you know, remember this was our GAN objective. We were trying to build a discriminator, which was trying to distinguish between the real data and the generated data, and then a generator, which was trying to uh, thwart the discriminator, right? So here, what we do is we, again, you know, have the same framework. But the discriminator, uh, you know, it's trying to uh, discriminate between basically your training data minus the redacted data points, because this is database redaction. And on the other side, what you have is on the discriminator side, what you have is, you know, you have like fake samples are the generated uh, on the generator side, right? You have the fake samples, which are the generated samples, plus you also throw in samples from the redacted set, right? Uniform samples from the redacted set. So this is a kind of, you can think about it as a kind of data augmentation in some sense, right? As a kind of neg negative data augmentation in some sense, right? So if you do this algorithm, them. And, you know, theoretically, we can show that, you know, if everything went optimally, then you would get the right answer in this case. Okay. So this is our database. We can extend this algorithm to a validity based algorithm where, you know, uh, you, you draw some samples from your generator, then you query to see these samples are valid. If they're not valid, then you can throw them in uh, into your training set and you can, you know, iterate, right? So this uh, then run a database algorithm on top of it, right? So this database algorithm is kind of the core of what we do. And then for classifier based, you have even more signal in the sense that you have like a continuous score and then you can use it to guide you even better, right? So this is essentially the uh, the idea, okay? Okay, so these are the algorithms in our paper. Final question is, how does it work? Uh, we looked at a simple experiment, which is redact a label. Okay, so here, you know, you have a simple data set, you redact all data points with a particular label. Okay, and so what do we care about? Uh, of course, you know, invalidity. Invalidity is the fraction of generated points which has the redacted label. So this is the fraction of points that shouldn't have been generated, right? It's a fraction of points that need to be redacted. Ideally, this is zero. If it's high, then that's a bad thing. Okay, and then we also care about generation quality, right? Because if we just generate random noise, you know, obviously our invalidity is zero, but uh, you know, that doesn't get us anywhere. So we also care about generation quality. I mean, we don't want our algorithm, re redaction algorithm to mess with generation quality. And uh, here is something we see on MNIST. Um, uh, so on the x-axis, so we have, you know, the invalidity plots and the inception score plots. So inception score measures the quality, right? Higher means better. And on the x-axis, we have the number of epochs, right? The, the number of epochs of training. And on the y-axis, we have these scores. And what you can see is that the scores are, especially the invalidity is quite low after, um, you know, after a few rounds of uh, training, right? And with uh, CIFAR, it's a little bit more complicated, but we overall, we see the same uh, pattern pattern. Okay. Uh, then the second experiment, which I'm going to present very fast is essentially, you know, remember if I, I talked about how uh, the points to be redacted may not even be in your training data set. And this is one of those cases where, uh, you know, sometimes the GANs trained on MNIST will generate things like half a four and half a nine, right? Half a four or half a eight. And can you remove those kinds of uh, things, right? And there, what we do is we use a, a, a a classifier based algorithm, we have a classifier which gives us a signal, right, whether this is valid or not. And when we try to remove the invalid uh, examples. And again, what we care about is invalidity versus generation quality. And here is, uh, you know, one, um, you know, one plot, basically, for the pre trained model, as you can see, there is a certain amount of invalidity right? Data redaction, once we did the data redaction, invalidity went down quite a bit. We also compared this with basically perfect data deletion, right? And, uh, you know, 
and what we got was uh, not not very well. And you know, it's the same with the inception score. After data redaction, actually, what you can see is that the inception score went up. And the reason why it went up is because these like bad samples, right? Like the imperfect samples that the model generates got erased, right? So the inception score went up. So the model quality actually improved. Okay. So in conclusion, what we do is we introduce a new formalization for data redaction in generative models. Uh, this introduces uh, and, you know, and we propose new algorithms for GANs that depend on the description of the redaction set. Uh, we also, you know, talk about how to use various kinds of signal, how to describe the redaction set, things like this. And uh, we have some, you know, basic experimental evaluation. And, you know, obviously the open question is how to scale this to bigger and different kinds of models, right? Because this is really an important problem in model gov governance. It's becoming very important as, you know, we generate, uh, you know, as we train bigger and bigger generative models. So how do we really solve this problem and think about it? And I will end with a picture of Jifang. He couldn't be here today. Is, um, yeah, poor guy is heartbroken.